if you weren't able to make it to Coffin Stadium, this was probably the next best place to be. Hundreds of fans, if not more, are gathered right down below me. You can see police tape is still up. Police are on the scene right now. Many drivers were going between 30 to 40 miles per hour, depending on who was driving. Now, many of those tiny house dwellers say there's a financial independence that comes from moving away from a bigger is better mindset. A car, she says, followed her from street to street, seeing it about five times over the course of eight blocks. It shows all of the locations of CVS around the Columbia area and as you can tell the closest ones are about an hour away from Columbia. Today was definitely one of those days you needed your coat in the morning and then in the afternoon probably were like do I need it? Exactly <laughs> yeah gorgeous out there. Which is why this chain and these security bars surround the machine now. But if you take a look directly across the street you can see there's a Walgreens right over there. That means you'll have to take a medical transportation vehicle just like this one and they don't come cheap. I was just trying to act like it didn't happen because I saw it happen too. I was like, all right, we'll just <laughs> I wasn't gonna let say it go. A word Maybe they you. didn't I, see it. She tells me she was driving east down I-70 towards St. Louis to spend some time at home. But when she got to Callaway County, that is when she got a surprise she never saw coming. For Alexandra Carey, her drive to St. Louis was just an ordinary trip until... It was like a long piece of wood and I hit it. It scratched the side of my tire and I immediately felt it. Carrie says she was more than an hour away from home when she blew out her tire. From there, she got as close as she could to her exit and that is when trooper Ethan Mueller showed up. And he came up, tapped on the window, and I, and I got out, and he said, are you okay? And, and I said, yeah, so he, that was his first concern. Then Carrie says that's when Trooper Mueller helped change her tire. So she shared her encounter on Facebook, not expecting much to come of it. Carrie says she posted it because she thought it was important to highlight the good in law enforcement. And it really surprised me because I see a bunch of, a lot of negative um, things on the news about it. And so it surprised me when he came up and the first thing he said was, are you okay? With more than 1,700 shares on her original post, Carrie says her Facebook has been filled with positive messages from all over. A few people have reached out to me saying, thank you so much for posting this. Um, they don't get a lot of recognition. He's kind of been the face of the highway patrol for a while and he's done a great job of it. And I spoke to Trooper Mueller earlier this afternoon. He tells me he was just doing his job, but he's happy that he was able to make someone's day a little better. Happy story for sure. Reporting live in Columbia, Colin Ruain, KOMU 8 News. Today I spoke to him for his first on-camera interview since Monday's confrontation. I can't, like, remove myself from being part of the story. I have to accept that and um, move on and, and deal with that. Tim Ty didn't expect to get national attention. Millions of people have seen the video of him and another reporter facing demonstrators who demanded they move away from a public area on MU's campus. You're physically intimidating people who have the right to be there and I would argue are not actually intruding on the scene. The scene was much quieter on the Carnahan Quad Wednesday, but the attention toward the now viral video has not died down. While Ty has received praise from across the country, he still has his critics. On Tuesday, we spoke to one of the demonstrators who said Ty was out of line. He was like, get out of my face, and he pushed her back. And that's when that other student got really upset. I never intentionally shoved anyone or pushed anyone. I did try to stand my ground when they were shoving me. Two MU staff members issued written apologies for the way they acted toward reporters. Other protesters have handed out flyers to reporters indicating a more welcoming tone to those covering their story in the future. While Ty believes he did nothing wrong, he says he probably would have reacted differently. You know, if I had to do it over again, I probably wouldn't have engaged as much. That video continues to get more traffic online. As of this afternoon, it had more than 2 million views on YouTube. On Facebook, the original post has more than 3,500 shares. Street by street, crews were out today preparing for the first snowfall of the season. Mike Eckenrod is in his first year working for Columbia Public Works, operating the largest truck in the city's fleet, and he comes with plenty of experience. You know, I started out in the oil fields many years ago, probably 30 years ago, driving trucks. He's one of the many operators who took their first drive of the season, familiarizing themselves with their winter routes. It gives us an idea how our trucks operate, how well they run. It just gives us a mental picture of what we need to do and how we need to plow our snow and get, get prepared for the season. On some of the streets, 
From navigating those sharp turns to keeping both hands on the wheel, Eckenrod says he's ready to go when the flakes fall. On top of operators getting refresher course on the road, Public Works is also reminding drivers that if they are parked in snow routes marked with these signs when there's more than two inches of snow, you could have your car towed and face a fine. As for this winter, hopefully decent weather <laughs> where we don't have to plow too much. So. Well, Jim, that debate lasted for a large part of the afternoon during today's veto session. And not only were lawmakers from both sides of the aisle there, but workers who were largely opposed to the legislation watched and waited for several hours until the votes were cast. By your vote of 96 yes and 63 no, you have failed. Oh, yeah! They were told to hold their applause, but it didn't matter. Workers who voiced their opposition to right-to-work legislation celebrated after the House was not able to get a two-thirds majority to overturn Governor Nixon's veto. That bill generated most of the attention at Wednesday's veto session. Republican Representative Eric Burleson was the bill's sponsor and says he's disappointed in the decision. The more that we debate this issue and the more that people research it, the more that people start voting yes. He and several others in support of it say it would have helped the state's job market and kept employers from forcing workers to unionize. Opponents of right to work say it would have hurt the middle class. And at times like this, uh, it's not the time to be lowering wages um, or to be eroding uh, the rights of the middle class. Democratic Representative Stephen Weber voted against right to work and says the decision is a victory for workers across the state. Uh, we don't need to do anything that reduces wages, um, reduces salaries, or makes it harder for middle-class Americans uh, who go to work every day uh, to make ends meet. The issue looks like it has come to an end for now. Still, Burleson tells us the right-to-work fight is far from over. It's not a matter of if Missouri becomes right-to-work, it's a matter of when Missouri becomes right-to-work. And Burleson told me he plans to bring the right-to-work debate back in the next legislative session by filing a bill. If the right to work debate comes back, it won't be for at least another few months. The 2016 legislative session starts in early January.